was thanking God for his goodness. And he went on to say, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all of his benefits, who forgiveth all thy iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases, who redeemeth thy life from destruction, who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercy, who satisfies thy mouth with good things, so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord executed righteousness and judgment for all that are oppressed. He made known his ways unto Moses, his acts unto the children of Israel. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and plenteous in mercy. He will not always chide, neither will he keep his anger forever. He's not dealt with us after our sins, nor rewarded us according to our iniquities. For as the heaven is high above the earth, so great is his mercy toward them that fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far as he removed our transgressions from us. Like as a father pitied his children, so does the Lord pity them that fear him. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Isn't the word of God awesome? It just has a way of moving and doing the things that you need it to do. Amen. Giving honor to God, to all the members that are here today, to all the leadership of the church, to all that are watching us on live stream. Amen. We greet you this morning in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. And we just thank you, uh, all of my brothers and sisters in Christ, for being here this morning and tuning in. Uh, I know the question, is there a word from the Lord? There is a word from the Lord. If you've got your Bibles with you, if you would go to Genesis, the 27th chapter, and I'm going to read verses 26 and 30. Amen and happy, happy Father's Day this morning. I, I, I guess I was so excited this morning that today is Father's Day. Bishop, I don't know if my wife knows it's Father's Day. I, I didn't see no, no big boxes. No, I, I didn't see nothing when I left home. I didn't, you know, wasn't nothing on stove cooking, wasn't I? I don't know, so when y'all get a chance, just remind Sister Pat, today is Father's Day. Amen. Amen. No nothing, Bishop. I, I, and believe me, Bishop, I was looking. I, I, <laughs> Amen. Amen. So feel free to pray for me right now if y'all want to. Amen. If you got your Bibles, Genesis 27 chapter, uh, verses 26, and, and the word of God reads, And his father Isaac said unto him, Come near now, and kiss me, my son. And he came near, and he kissed him, and he smelled the smell of his raiment, and blessed him, and said, See, the smell of my son is as the smell of the field which the Lord has blessed. Therefore, God, give thee the dew of heaven and the fattest of the earth and plenty of corn and wine. Let people serve thee and let nations bow down to thee. Be Lord over thy brethren and let thy mother's sons bow down to thee. Cursed be everyone that curseth thee and blessed be everyone that blesseth thee. And it came to pass, as soon as Isaac made an end of blessing Jacob, and Jacob was yet scarce gone out from his presence, or the presence of Isaac, his father, that Esau, his brother, came in from hunting. If you bear with me, I want to take a closer look at, at that 30th verse. And it says, and it came to pass, as soon as Isaac had made an end of blessing Jacob. 
that Jacob was yet scarcely gone out from the presence of his father. As soon as he got the blessing, he got out of there. And this morning I want to talk about faith in the blessing. Amen. Right where we're standing. Father God, we just thank you, Lord, for all that you've done for us. Lord, we thank you that you woke us up this morning and started us on our way. Lord, we come before you this morning in the name of Jesus. We thank you for the word. We thank you for the anointing that's in this house and upon me, these lips of clay. Lord, bless me that I speak this word with excellence, accuracy, and boldness. Asking that you think through my mind, speak through my lips, and this word will come forth unhindered, unchecked by any outside force. And we give you all the praise, call it done, and fully expecting signs, wonders, and miracles, confirming the word in Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Faith in the blessing. We got to have faith in the blessing. Amen. We've been, over the last two years, I believe, I, and I'm somewhat guessing at this, but about two years ago, we started talking about prayer. And we preached a series on prayer, and, and then we went from prayer to pray to prayer and fasting. And we talked about when you pray and the things that you need to do, and when you fast, what you need to do. And then we moved from that, and I'm, I'm trying to stir up your memory so we, we, we can see where I'm going with this. We, we talked about watch what you say, and, and that your words have power. And we moved from that, and we talked about the kingdom. And we talked about that the kingdom is on the inside of you. And, and what the Lord is showing me that when I was working on these and we were preaching, it, it, it looked like I was preaching separate items and separate things and, and, and so forth. And I said, Lord, what are you doing? And what he showed me is that it's going to come to a point where all this stuff is going to hook up. And when you start thinking about it, you're going to start saying things like, I'm blessed. I, I got the kingdom of God in me. When things go wrong, all I got, I can pray. I can pray. Not only that, I can fast and pray. I can get, see when you hook it up, you'll see. And this morning we're talking about uh, the blessing, and we've got to have faith in the blessing. Uh, it, it's more of an introduction this morning, so I'm gonna try not to go deep. Well, I'm not gonna try. I won't go deep, and, and but. If you keep in mind that over the next few weeks, we'll talk more and more uh, about the blessing. But this morning, we've got to understand that God uh, is a God of love. And his desire is for you to be abund abundantly blessed. He, he wants you to have everything that belongs to you that's in his word. Uh, the blessing is designed to give you an inheritance and to take back everything that the enemy has stolen from you. See, this blessing that we're talking about, this blessing will fix whatever may be broken in your life. Uh, but, it's, but in order for it to operate, we have to have faith. And here we go. When I was preaching about the kingdom, we're not talking about any kind of faith. We're talking about the God kind of faith. That whatever you ask, it shall come to pass. Uh, for those that remember when I was talking about the kingdom, and I, I told you that faith is the currency of the kingdom, and anything you receive, including the blessing, must be received by faith. It, it takes faith, y'all, to be saved. It, it takes faith to be healed, it, and, and faith to access anything else you need or desire from God. We have been taught to have faith in the name of Jesus. Y'all, we use it. All of when you in your prayer, in the name of Jesus. See, we, we use that name and we know how to use it, but we have faith in that name. In Philippians, the second chapter, the 10th verse, 
it says that in the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow, and there are things in heaven, and things in earth, and things under the earth. We, we have them in that name of Jesus. For the Bible scholars in here, you remember when the Bible said that Peter and John went up together to the temple, and it was the hour of prayer. And they saw a certain man lame from his mother's womb where he was carried daily to the gate uh, called Beautiful. And then he asked them alms. But then he saw Peter, uh, he saw Peter and John coming and he put eyes on them. Uh, but Peter said, silver and gold have I not. But in the name of Jesus, Pete, rise up and get rise up and walk. The Bible says that when he put down and he lifted him up by his right hand, that immediately strength came into his ankle and, and his foot. And the Bible said, and the man leaped up, he stood up and walked and entered into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. And all the people saw him walking and praising God. And, and they were filled with wonder and amazement that which, what had happened to this man. The Bible said that Peter saw him, and he answered unto the people, he said, Ye men of, of Israel, why marvel ye at this? Or why look ye so earnestly on us? As though by our own power and holiness we made this man walk. He said, no, it was in the name of Jesus and his name through faith. In his name made this man strong whom you see and know. His faith is in the name of Jesus. Yo, we have faith in the name of Jesus. But what now we've got to start working on is have faith in the blessing. See, what, what is the blessing? The blessing is the presence and power of God in a person's life that enables them to prosper in every area of their life, regardless of their natural circumstances. He goes on to say, with the blessing, you can take the worst place on earth and turn it into heaven on earth without having to toil or struggle to do it. I believe that's why the writer said in Proverbs 10 and 22, the blessing of the Lord, it made it rich and it added, no, you don't have to fight about nothing. You don't have to worry. You don't have to sweat. But when you go to God and you see he's blessing you, the Lord continue to bless you. Now, I've got to admit something this morning, and y'all know I've told you that. My wife tell me, you get up and you tell everything. You know? But when I was putting this sermon together, I, I pulled this particular scripture because I'm talking about the blessing. And, and Jacob was receiving the blessing. Well, the Lord showed me something. He said, that's not what this is about. See, if you ask anybody in here that particular scripture, you say, what happened there? What is that about? It's about, you would say, most will say, it's about when Jacob stole the blessing from Esau. Yeah, right. See? Right. And, and you know what? Yeah, a few days ago, Bishop, if you hit me with it, I said, it's about when Jacob stole the blessing from Esau. Wow. But what I really found out, the lesson in this particular scripture is about the will of God. Right. That we got to follow the will of God. And no matter what happens, the will of God is it, going to happen. Just, if you're born again and saved, you don't have to worry about nothing. Because God is going to work in your life. He's going to move things. His will will be done. See, here's the, the, the story. And let me see if I can fix it up for you. See, the Bible said that when things started out before Esau and Jacob, that Rebekah was barren. She couldn't have kids. But Isaac went to God, and the Bible said that she conceived. And if you look over in Genesis, the 25th chapter, around the 22nd verse, it reads like this. 
and, and the children struggled together with, within her when she was praying, that they was rational. And, and she said, if it be so, why am I thus? And she went and inquired of the Lord. And the Lord said unto her, two nations are in thy womb. The uh, two uh, manner of people shall be separated from thy bowels. And one people shall be strong, that they're stronger than the other. Here's the key. And the elder will serve the younger. So did, did you get that? That this is from God. This is what God told Rebecca. See, I, I like this because this is what I figured out about this thing. You remember when God told uh, Jeremiah, I knew you before you were formed in your mother's womb? It, it's the same way here. God knew them while they were in the womb. And, and, and see, here's the thing. He chose Jacob, the youngest God did. And see, this is before they were born. See, this is before they sinned. This is before they lied. This is before they stole. This is before. He said, I know them. And even knowing all of that, he said, the, uh, the elder will serve the younger. But here's what happens when I was telling you that uh, it's about God's will. Uh, the Bible says, when you, even in that, in that 27th chapter around the first verse, say it came to pass that when Isaac was old and his eyes were dim, that he could not see. And he called Esau his elder son, and he said unto him, My son, and he said, Here I am. And he said, I'm old, and I know not how many days I have to my death. He says, now therefore, I pray thee, take thy weapon and thy quiver and thy bow and go out to the field and bring me back some venison. For those that don't know, that's dear me. And he goes on to say, and make me a savory meat, such as I love, and, and, and bring it to me. And he said, and then when I eat, that my soul will bless you. He's telling him, I'm going to give you the blessing. But, but we already know what God said in the 25th chapter, that the elder shall serve the younger. Somebody said, see, Isaac was attempting to bypass God's will. And, and I didn't put it in my notes, but for those that know that, uh, that, uh, that Isaac loved Esau, and, and Rebecca loved Jacob, and Esau went hunting, Jacob stayed in the house, he sold, he, he, you know, well, we ain't gonna take that no further, but his mother loved him. <laughs> and, and the Bible says that, uh, that, that Isaac was gonna put Esau before Jacob and give him the blessing. And, and when you look at this situation, you say, well, why in the world, you know, God has blessed Isaac. And Isaac has walked closely with God. How in the world would he do something like that knowing that God has chose Jacob? And one of the things when you really think about it, as difficult as it may be to understand, there's one thing that we have to remember. The weakness and desires of our flesh. See, the deep craving to do what we want and what we think is best. See, we are all weak in the flesh. See, Isaac wanted to do what he wanted to do and not what God wanted him to do. He, he knew that it was God's will for Jacob to receive the blessing and the inheritance of the family. See, our flesh is desperately weak. When, when, when we want something, I'm talking to somebody this morning, when we want something, we really desire, too often we go after it, no matter what God's word says about it. See, it may be recognition, it may be possession, it may be honor, power, position, security, property, pleasure, money. No matter what we want, it is within our nature to rationalize our behavior, convincing ourselves that God will understand what I'm doing. He won't. The Bible says in Jeremiah, the 17th chapter, he said, the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? 
In Hebrews, the third chapter, the 12th verse, it says, Take heed, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief by departing from the living God. In 2 Corinthians, the 5th chapter, the 10th verse, it says, For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that he has done, whether it be good or bad. God's will, y'all, it will be done. When you read on in that 27th chapter, the Bible says that Rebecca heard Isaac speak to Esau. And, and, and Isaac, when, when, and when Esau went to go hunting, the Bible said that Rebecca spoke to Jacob, her son, saying, Behold, I heard thy father speak to Esau, thy brother, saying, Bring me venison and, and make me a savory meat that I may eat and bless thee, therefore, the Lord, before my death. Now, therefore, my son, obey my voice. This is Rebecca speaking to Jacob, and according to uh, which I command. He, she said, I will make, and see, this is a mother's love. She said, don't worry about it. She said, I will make the savory meat that your father liked, and, and the one that he loved, and thou shalt bring it to thy father, that he may eat, and that he may bless thee before his death. And Jacob said to Rebekah, Behold, Esau, my brother, is hairy. And he said, and, and, and I'm smooth. And he said, My father will, will feel me, and he shall uh, seem to me, or see me as a deceiver. Well, when I read that, I said, But what is he? <laughs> a, a, a deceiver. And, and he shall bring a curse upon me and not a blessing. Now, again, I know this is Father's Day, but this is a mother's love. She said, no, baby, thou curse shall be upon me. I, I, I'll take it, but we're going to do this. Rebecca's sin was to attempt to work out God's will before his time. Just by chance, Rebecca overheard Isaac's conversation uh, to Esau. And what she heard, it apparently shocked her. And she knew that Isaac, her husband, was disobeying God. See, no doubt that uh, Rebecca was a faithful wife and she would do whatever her husband asked her to do. See, and right now, at this point, uh, I'm sure uh, thoughts flooded her mind, like, what can I do to stop him? Well, you know, should I wait for God to work in this situation? See, if he blesses, if Isaac blessed uh, Esau with the blessing, how can God turn that situation around and, and bless Jacob. She felt that she had to do something to stop it. And, and what she was really doing, she did not have enough faith in God that God is able to work. And come on, y'all. He can work any situation while you're trying to figure it out. You're sitting around thinking this thing through, rolling it over. God can do more than you can ever think. He's a God. He can do anything. I heard one writer say, sometimes we just need to let God be God. Let God do it. Take your hands off of it and let God do it. I had to tell somebody a couple weeks ago, I said the truth of the matter is, if you would get out of it, and if you would close your mouth and shut up and stop trying to work it, you don't see. See, sometimes you got to say, God, that's yours. And I'm not going to do anything with it. And you walk away. And I'm here to tell you that he'll take it and he'll turn it around and work it in your face. But see, too often we make the same mistakes that Rebecca made. We know God's will. For he has spoken to us through his word, through his spirit, through the preacher, through some fellow believer, some event, or some circumstance that happened in your life. But we devise human plans and ways to bring about God's will in our life. And you've got to understand, our plans are not God's plans. Our way is not God's way. Our timing is not God's timing. In Psalms 18, it says, as for God, his way is perfect. And the word of 
of the Lord is tried. He is a buckler to all those that trust in him. In Isaiah 55 and 8, he says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, said the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, uh, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. Stop trying to work it out. Let go and let God. Take your hands off. Let go and let God. And the Bible goes on to talk about Jacob and what he did. And, and I'll just briefly tell you this. Jacob was obviously had been taught that, that he was the, high, uh, the heir to God's promise. And he had secured the birthright during the moment of weakness with Esau. Remember, he, he gave him a bowl of stew, and Esau said, well, what, what is my birthright uh, good for? I'm hungry, I could die right here. And then Jacob stole his birthright. See, he was also wrong in following the influence of his mother and allowing her to overpower him. He was not, he, he was just wrong in seeking the blessing through his own self-sufficient and deceit. See, he knew he was wrong. He, he went in the room and his father Isaac said unto him, come here. And he said, kiss me, my son. And he said, and he blessed him. And here's the blessing that he put upon him. He said, therefore, God, give thee the dew of heaven and the fattest of the earth and plenty of corn and wine. Let people serve thee and nations bow down to thee and uh, uh, to thee and be Lord over thy brothers and let thy mother's son bow down to thee. Cursed be everyone that curses thee and blessed be everyone that blessed thee. And the Bible said that it came to pass. As soon as Jacob got the blessing, he got out of there and he ran. And here's the thing that you got to understand. He said that it was a blessing. He didn't wait for nothing to be done. The, the Bible said he got up and ran out of there. And so here's what you got to understand. That notice that when Isaac uh, received the blessing from his father Abraham, they didn't have some big time lawyer, a table full of documents to sign in order to pass the inheritance on to the son. The father simply spoke words uh, 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 to the beneficiary and he received it by faith. By faith, Abraham passed the, the blessing to Isaac, and by faith, Isaac passed the blessing to Jacob. And see, the good news is that that same blessing is now on you and me through faith in Jesus Christ. See, you got it, but we don't use it. You got the blessing on you right now. See, you can call your children in, and you can lay your hands on them, and you, you can say things like, you ain't gonna be no game banger. You ain't gonna be caught up in the street. You're not gonna get hooked on drugs. You're gonna make, you're going to college and you're gonna get a degree. You're gonna open up a business. You're gonna be a millionaire. See, you lay your hands on and you give them the blessing. Somebody said, Reverend, I don't see it. You saying it's on us already? The Bible said that are the seed of Abraham. The blessing of old Abraham was for Abraham and his seed, which Christ and all those who, have, who would receive the salvation of him, talking about Jesus Christ. This is where we come in. If you go to the book of Galatians, the third chapter, and start reading at that 13th verse, this is what you're going to read. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, cursed is everyone that hangeth upon the tree, that the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. When you get down to that 29th verse, it says, and if ye be Christ." Then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to his promise. And that's what you're building up on. Because I am saved by Jesus Christ, I am the seed of Abraham. And that I can give everything that Isaac had, everything that Jacob. 
to God. He will bring it to pass. With our head bowed, Father God, we just thank you, Lord, for all that you've done for us. We thank you that you woke us up this morning and started us on our way. Lord, I don't know who's out on live stream land and the things that they're doing and going through, but I just ask this morning that you touch their spirit, Lord. Let them know that right now they're blessed. And Lord, that more than that, you want to bless them and that they have everything that you want them to have. And Lord, we just believe in that you're going to turn their life around in Jesus' name. Amen. Before we sign off, I just want to remind all of those that are watching us on live stream that will be uh, in our prayer call on Tuesday night at 7 p.m. And then again on Friday morning at 6 a.m. And then back here next Sunday morning at 11. Amen. Have a great day. 